Hi bot builders, I'm Andrea Galately from Team Witch Doctor on BattleBots, and this is Witch Doctor Junior, made possible by Send Cut Send. In this video series, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to build your very first small scale battle bot. As we've met fans at meet and greets all across the country, the most common question by far is how to get started building your own robot. The robots on the TV show BattleBots weigh 250 pounds and they can cost thousands of dollars to build. They require sponsors and a very expensive arena, so it's really not the best option for your first build. The good news is that all across the country, there is an incredible community of robot builders competing their smaller robots in local tournaments. Some of these events are so big that they actually have more competitors in the TV show. I love that BattleBots inspires people to design and build their own robots, and I've been looking for more ways to help people get started. Team Witch Doctor started Make Miami Makerspace to host robotics classes and events and give people a place to build. In these classes with new builders of all ages, we've learned how to better help people build their first robot. Our youngest builders are around the age of five, and although they do need some parental supervision and guidance, they've done an excellent job of building their robot, driving it at competitions, and even making repairs. They're getting an incredible head start, and I'm sure they'll be beating the pros in no time. Before you get too far into your first build, I highly recommend finding a local event and attending. You can find events near you at the links on your screen. Once you're there, make sure to spend some time talking to the competitors and let them know that you plan to compete soon. We all love welcoming new builders into our sport, and I know you'll be pleasantly surprised at how open and welcoming our community can be. The best way to learn how to build robots is to talk to builders and to build one yourself. It's also crazy awesome to see robot battles in person for the first time, and you'll be inspired and motivated to get to work on your own robot. The first big decision you'll have to make for your robot design is in which weight class you'd like to compete. In local community events, the weight classes are smaller than the 250 pound heavyweights that you see on the TV show. This means that the robots are easier to build, they are significantly less expensive, and they are much safer to run, making it accessible to builders of all ages. The smaller weight classes are called the insect weight classes, and they're named after insects such as fleas, ants, and beetles. For a fun sense of scale, here's a piece of Tim Tones bar which weighs just over 20 pounds. This should give you a good idea of just how big the heavyweights on the TV show are, and a sense of scale of the smaller robots that you'll be competing. If you already have some robot building experience, and you have some access to be able to make some of your own parts, the beetle weight class may be a good place for you to start. These three prong robots are the biggest of the insect weight classes, and they can do some serious damage. This is my own three pound build, Trilobiter, which is a full body spinner like you've seen with Captain, Shredderator, and Gigabyte. I usually don't recommend the beetle weight class as your first build because the damage can be pretty serious, you do need some metal parts to be competitive, and it's just a better class to grow into once you get a little bit more experience. The very smallest insect weight class is called the Flea Weights. These robots just weigh 150 grams, which is just one third of a pound. Here are some flea weight robots. This is Mustachio, which is a simple wedge robot with a big mustache on the front. Its mustache used to look better before it got all of this battle damage on it. And this is Bedazzler, which is actually Will's robot from Hypershock, but he left it here at our makerspace so we could do some show and tell for new members. The flea weight class is one of my favorite classes to compete in. Since the robots are small and easy to build, it actually makes it a very creative class. You could try crazy ideas without having to spend months on the build. These flea weight robots can actually be entirely 3D printed and still be very competitive. Finally, what I consider to be the sweet spot of the insect weights are the one pound robots. This is a weight class that we use for all of our classes at the Makerspace. Here are some examples of one pound robots. <laughs> this is number two, which is a full body spinner. This is Mike's robot and it's a giant poop emoji with a titanium bar to cause some serious damage. This is my one pound robot, Alexander Hammerton, which is a hammer robot but the hammer is shaped like Hamilton's dueling pistol. As you can see, we're still having a lot of fun competing in these insect weight classes. Even though we are competing big robots on the TV show, we absolutely have not outgrown these smaller weight classes. We compete on BattleBots just once a year, but we compete at local events with our insect weight robots almost every month. If this is your very first build and you don't have access to shop equipment or a makerspace, I very highly recommend starting with the one pound robot. Even if you do have some equipment at home, like a drill press or even some power tools, I still recommend the one pound class. These robots are easy to repair, they still get huge hits in the arena, and they're affordable. The next thing you have to decide is whether you want to start building your first robot from scratch or if you prefer to start with a kit. For new builders, and especially young builders, I definitely recommend starting with a kit. 
This is how we run our classes at our makerspace, and we've gotten great feedback from our builders. Starting with a kit gives you a chance to learn how the components work, how to connect them together, and then get some competition experience before starting your next robot build from scratch. One of the hardest parts of starting a build from scratch can be selecting the right components for the job. Starting with the kit takes this guesswork out of it for you and lets you get competing sooner. Once you're ready for a custom build, you can take all of the internal components from the kit and reuse them in your new build. If you decide that you want to use a kit for your first robot, you have a pretty wide selection to choose from. There are different kits available at the different weight classes at all sorts of price points. For the purpose of this video series, I'm going to start with the Fingertech Viper Kit, which is an ant weight robot. I chose this kit because it's really affordable and a great difficulty level for beginners, but all of the components are really robust and I'm still using them in my own builds. I also like that these kits allow a lot of room to grow. They are under the one pound weight limit, so you have plenty of room to make modifications once you're ready. Fingertech also offers three different weapon add-ons, so you can add the weapon of your choice to your robot. It's best if you build the base wedge kit first, go to your first competition, and then go back and add a weapon for your second event. There may be other kits that are more competitive right out of the box, but I really like the Fingertech Viper kit because it's a good difficulty level for beginners, while still allowing room to modify and grow as you get more experience. Even if you decide not to use a kit for your first build, it can still be very helpful to take a look at the components and get an idea of how to start choosing parts. Let's take a look at what you get when you buy a Fingertech Viper kit. Comes with an instruction manual. This manual has step-by-step -step instructions on how to build the kit. We're going to go into more details on all these steps so that you can understand why things work the way they do and why they're connected together the way they are. But even if you didn't watch this video series, if you just follow all of these steps, you would end up with a working robot. This is to connect the battery if you end up using a 9 volt battery. Uh, we'll talk about a few battery options later as well. And then this is the guts of the kit. So let's open up this plastic here so we can get started. So this is the armor for the kit, which we'll use towards the end of the build. We have the aluminum chassis here. You can see in black and it includes some rivet nuts so that you can bolt everything together easily. Uh, it actually doesn't require any drilling or tapping at all, so it's really easy with just hand tools. And then here we have the electronics, which you'll use to control your motors, some wheels. And let's take a look at what's in this bag. Right, so we'll go more in depth into all of these parts and exactly what they do and how they work, but just so you have an overview, these are the drive motors. This is going to be the on-off switch for your robot. So we'll wire that in as well. These are the drive hubs, so we'll end up putting these tires on these hubs to be able to attach them to your drive motors. Here's all the hardware and the hex key that you'll need to put it all together. And these are ring clip pliers, which we're going to need to put your wheels on. And that's it. That's everything that comes in the kit and everything. This is a bare minimum that you need to put together to build a robot. So you'll notice this robot is a wedge. It's going to end up looking kind of like this. So the parts that come in the kit now do not include anything to add a weapon to it, but you can notice that the armor actually has some cutouts already on it. And that's because Fingertech also sells some weapon modules that you can add onto it. So you have the option of doing either a vertical spinner, a horizontal spinner, or a lifter. And you do it all with very minimal modifications to the parts that you see here. Um, so once you build this basic kit, you'll be able to add a weapon to it. When you buy your kit, you'll also need to buy a transmitter and a receiver. These don't come with the kit because once you have a transmitter, you can connect it to a lot of different robots. So this is something that you only have to buy once and you can move it from robot to robot. Um, even if you end up building bigger robots, you can still use the same transmitter. Uh, for example, I use the same transmitter to operate the weapon on Witch Doctor than I do uh, to control all my little robots. I'll take a minute to walk you through the process of ordering a Fingertech Viper kit. That way you can be sure that you have everything you need for your first event. There's a link in the description that will take you directly to this page where you can order your Fingertech Viper kit. You'll notice that the price is in Canadian dollars, and that's because Fingertech is based in Canada. But if you look right here, you'll see the conversion into US dollars. If this is your very first robot, you probably don't have a remote control or a battery charger yet. If you need to buy these with your kit, you can simply add them right here. So this first option is for radio transmitter and receiver. This is a remote control that you'll need to drive the robot. So you can just switch this on to yes. 
you'll also need to add the battery and charger to your kit. So I'll go ahead and switch yes on here too. You'll see that as you change these options, the price of the kit updates up here to reflect it. Then you simply click add to cart and you'll be ready to go check out once you're done shopping. If you scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll see that there's some quick links so that you can add your weapon add-ons if you want to start your build with a weapon. If you're going to be using your kit in combat at a local event, it's very likely that you'll need some spare parts to fix some of the damage you'll get during the matches. The most important spare parts that I recommend you get are extra drive motors. There's a link right here that takes you directly to that page. Although these motors can last quite a few matches, these robots hit really hard and a direct hit to the wheel can take one out. If you want to take a look at all the spare parts available through this website, we can go here to this link that says Kits and Parts, and then click here on Viper Kit Spare Parts. All of the parts that you see here are compatible with your kit, so that takes all of the guesswork out of it for you. If you're ready to also buy a weapon for your robot now, you can click here at the kit add-ons. You'll see all of the weapon choices here. For example, if you buy the lifter add-on, you can see here that it comes with all of the parts necessary to add the lifter to the base kit that you built. When you buy the kit, it brings all of the tools that you need to use to build it. However, as you start going to more events and you start needing to repair your robot, it's good to have a small toolbox with some additional tools. Here are some of the things that I like to have in my toolbox. It's super useful to have zip ties in your toolbox. These are plastic ties that can be used to hold down wires or anything else that you need to constrain within your robot. You should zip it like that and you can cut off the excess and it's a super secure hold. So these are super common even in the big robots. So I highly recommend getting some of these to contain some of the wires in your robot. Even though your kit brings the hex keys that you need, I always recommend getting a, a hex key set like this that has all of the sizes built in. Um, this is much harder to lose so you have them all right when you need them. You don't really need electrical tape right away with the kit because all of the connectors come covered. Uh, but as you get a little bit more advanced, you're going to start soldering those connections. And I'll show you how to do that in a future video. But electrical tape is really good to cover those electrical connections. You'd be surprised how useful a roll of duct tape can be in your toolbox. As you start competing and you get some damage that you need to repair, duct tape is surprisingly useful in fixing things. If you only have one pair of pliers in your toolbox, I recommend having needle nose pliers. Um, the small tips are really good for all the tiny little parts that you're going to be using in this robot since the robot is small. If you need to make any modifications on the spot at the event, having a ruler to measure with and a sharpie to mark with uh, can make those things a lot easier. Everything on the finger tech kit works with the hex keys, so you don't really need a screwdriver. But if you start adding a weapon, some of those weapon motors do have these tiny Phillips head screws. Um, and screwdrivers in general is just handy to have around. Before we keep going, let's take a minute to talk about safety. It's important to remember at all times while you're building or competing a combat robot that fighting robots can be dangerous. When you register for an event, you must read the rules carefully and make sure that you follow them. It's also important to keep safety in mind while you're building robots at home. Always be aware that robots are dangerous and use common sense to keep yourself and others around you safe. If you're going to be using tools that may be sharp or produce sparks or chips, you always want to make sure that you're wearing safety glasses. If the tools are loud, you'll also want to wear some hearing protection. When you're using these tools, please make sure that there aren't other people around you that may get hurt, especially if they're not paying attention to what you're doing. Always make sure to test your robots in a safe way, especially if you have a spinning weapon on your robot. If you don't have a safe way to test your weapon at home, it's better to wait until you're at the event and test it in the arena. You can still get some testing at home without the spinning weapon so that you can practice your driving. A lot of events will actually have time for testing in the arena if you show up early and you can practice with your weapon before the event starts. If you want to get some driving practice at home, you can just take off the spinning blade from your robot so that it doesn't accidentally spin up. If you're concerned about safely testing a spinning weapon, it may be best to start your first build with a different kind of weapon. If you're watching this video series as a parent that will be supervising a child's build, I highly recommend starting them off with a wedge robot with no weapon. This way they can get familiar with how to turn a robot on and off, how to enter and exit the arena, and get a little bit more comfortable before we start introducing all the extra rules surrounding spinning weapons. If they feel strongly about starting with a weapon robot, the lifter add-on for the Viper Kit is a good choice. We're all building robots to have fun, and the last thing we want is for anybody to get hurt. So please just keep in mind that these are fighting robots, they can be dangerous, but with the right precautions, it can be a very safe sport. 
I would like to thank Send Cut Send for making this video possible. Send Cut Send is not only sponsoring a number of BattleBots teams this season, but they're really supporting the robot building community as a whole. Once you start building a robot, you're pretty quickly going to want to design your own robot parts. This can be overwhelming, especially if you don't have a way to cut metal at home, which most people don't. Send Cut Send makes it really easy to draw out your design, send it to them, and then get parts back. You may not feel ready to start designing your own robot parts just yet, but I promise you'll be ready very soon. When you are, Send Cut Send will make sure you have those parts in time for your next big event. Over the next few videos, I'll be walking you through the process of ordering your custom robot parts, from designing your parts, submitting it on their website, and finally getting your finished parts. Thank you for supporting this video, Send Cut Send, and for empowering the next generation of robot builders. Here's what you'll learn in the rest of this video series. You'll be learning about drive motors, weapon systems, remote controls, batteries and chargers, electronics, and of course, also competing and repairing your robot. I'm super excited to be with you on this journey to build your very first combat robot. If you have any questions about getting started that I haven't answered here, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll see you in episode two, where we'll learn how to build a drive system for your robot. Happy building!